So here, talk through this hexagonal slither link I wrote called Snowflake. And one of the things I want to do is not use the digit zero anywhere in the grid and not necessarily use any easy clues. I actually have this pair of five five, which is one of the equivalents to joined three threes in a, in a square cell slither link that people may recognize. And this is one of the break-ins for the puzzle. The other is a particular pattern that's up here, and we'll come back to it, but this 52525 five, five pattern. So ways that fives near large and small digits get, get used as the start for this puzzle. One thing to recognize in this 5-5 five, five pattern is one of these ends on one side, one on the other side gets used. But around a four clue, if you just turn quickly around it, you always take the remaining three cells. And this is a visual pattern where you'll see that you take this edge around the one, but now you have nowhere else to go and you strand it in the end. So the pattern that has a quick turn around the four doesn't work. It has to have a quick turn around the two on the side and then comes out along the side for the four. So the last edge of the one is going to be one of the ones we've taken. But once we've marked this in, we can't miss both of these edges. And so if we don't take the top, we would miss both of those edges. That marks all these ends off. It gives us just these options for this two, which turns into this clue, has to turn quickly out, this has to turn quickly down, this four has to get to an edge of the grid, and so this is one starting point for the puzzle. The other was working around this 52525 five, five set, and one thing to note about this is that, you know, a five is always going to have one open set and then the rest are going to be closed end loops. And so what you should be able to note first is near just a 5-2, particularly a 5-2-5 set like this, you're not going to have just one open end uh, on the 2 because the other ends will then have to be coming from the 5. So both 2s will then be sort of to the left in this case. And as this other side gets ticked off, um, as it tries to get filled in, putting in another open end around that five or trying to take this end, another, none of those are options. So you can't put two ends with an opening around a five two set near another uh, five, but you have to instead at least think these are the ends that get used and the fives are efficiently turning. So this is kind of the starting pattern. It doesn't hold across this four clue, but it does hold here and it means that these fives have to efficiently turn in this case, this five that's got two sets of two fives around it is, is fully specified. And this five down here just has partial specification. Um, one thing we said this down below, like if this, if this four gets closed here, once these ends come in, you'll see that the fives do join to each other. So you can actually note that the, the, the four doesn't get a quick joining. It does have these uh, turns sort of made, but we don't know more than that yet, except that one end coming from the five will come out this vertex in that direction. So coming back to the left, uh, this fully specified five joins to a four where we can't do too much, and it joins to a one where we can do a lot, and that's because we have effectively marked the last ends, um, except for one turn into the space. And if we actually are carefully accounting around this, where this two is finished, I don't mean to mark all these X's all the time, but it sort of helps sometimes to mark them in. We have four ends left around this three clue, and two of them always come together because we don't have a turn around the space. So we only get up to three if we take these ends, and that does mean we turn down around this one straight away. This three clue has two ends used, so it uses this edge or this edge, but in either scenario, an end will come out from this cell hit into this five, and now that puts this pattern into the grid, which again has a quick uh, marking we can do around the five. That completes this four and sets up some more tension in the grid that we'll uh, need to work through uh, as we make uh, continued progress. Now we have some questions on this right side of the grid, like do these ends come together or, or not? And some of this will come from actually thinking through I think the patterns around this 244 clue. And we can do some work here now, or we can actually do some work up top now. Um, all of all these will be okay. I guess one thing to do sort of coming down below is to recognize right now this four clue has these two ends joined together. So we either take them both or we take neither of them. And one thing you'll see is that it's not possible to take neither of them. Um, when you put in this four, you now don't have a way to complete this four clue because of the other parts of the grid that are already partially utilized. And so that marks off these ends. It now actually means this four up top 
has these three ends all together. It doesn't have any option but to take all those together and then takes one more end, but it can't take a set of two. Three plus two is too large. And so we get this started. And this pattern in the grid says one end is going to come down and connect into the space and it can connect to here, here. We don't know enough yet about this four clue, but we've got some good progress with where that starts. This four also comes up and over, and that means this comes up and over. And so there's a loop end chase that's starting in this part of the grid. We should now see we've got some additional tension now with this one three repair. And one thing to note is we're not going to be taking this edge of the one because then the three has to come this way and has nowhere to turn out from the cell. So instead we've got three cells we can take around the three or these two which option on and off. And so the set of three together is what we always have to take. That puts this in, it closes this off, it now actually closes out these edges, which means we have to take these two edges. And we have this start at the top. Um, that actually marks enough around this three that this three is actually forced to take these cells. That means that this four is required to take these two. This three has to take this one. We get this coming down here, and so it may be a good time to start to shade in some cells, but we now have two ends that are chasing each other along this part of the grid, and so we at least know this at the start, that these have to stay apart while we have these other clues working through on their way. Um, this loop end has to come down, and now this two uses this edge or this edge, but always takes this edge. And so this is now first place I'm going to turn on some shading, but there's a very hard deduction. It doesn't have to be hard deduction. It depends how observant you are about these cells. And as these cells are all in the same group, and they're basically bounded on the outside. And uh, you should recognize that some of the constraints that are going to happen around a clue like this five like there, there's a way right now if you shaded just these cells, and that is to say you put this edge, you put this edge, you put this edge, you put this edge, you'd close off the loop. It'd be a valid shading in general. But it, it's sort of saying that there's some tension around this five clue because the five can look like it's this way or looks like it this way. And if the five comes up, um, let me sort of not use the coloring as much, but if the five comes up, there are effectively two ways this goes. The two, three comes together like this and it closes on its own or the two, three comes like this, and it's all in that blue group I was just showing you before. And so what you can't do is have this edge taken. You have to have this edge taken. And we still have some tension about what's going on in this blue shape. So we're gonna keep the blue shape as we're working through it, but we have this five that now has to come to the right. It's gonna mark in these edges. We now can't take two of the two edges together, so these channels are blocked off, so this has to come to the left. This two edge is the one we have to take, and that now closes off this set. It gives us these ends that don't want to close on each other. It gives us this set for the four that have to close together, and I did say there's more you could do over on this side uh, earlier. Um, we'll now do it right now. Like some of the stuff you can do earlier is say that you can't take those two outside parts of the two, because then you, you effectively don't have a way to take this four uh, and this four together. Um, right now, where we have this end, it's very obvious because you can't take all three of these together, which we'd have to. So we have to take just this one that takes these, takes this set, and now closes the loop, loop off here. And so this may be a useful time to come back to shading and just sort of show you the interior of the, the whole loop um, because we're gonna have a new uh, interior group starting down here. And this group, which will stay in white, cannot come up and close on itself, so it's going to have to instead come the other way. And taking those two cells, we can't take these cells, which means this three has to come this way. And marking that, this group now has to take these cells, but still we don't want to close this off, so this comes over here. This comes and takes these cells, but we don't want to take these because then we'll close it off again. In fact, we just want to have this loop end uh, chase further around the grid. This four now has to come this way instead, come up. This end has to come in, which means we get the three marked this way. That three being marked that way marks off these cells, so this three comes in this way. So we're again having these, these ends chase each other. 
uh, coming this way would get more than two cells. We got to take this, but we can't take this edge because again, we'd close off this loop. It's maybe a little more obvious when I put all the other colors around it, but you know, all these cells in blue are leaving just that set in white, and that set in white has to join to all the rest in white. So this comes to the left, this comes to the right, and then to the left. We can't take these cells, so this comes over this way, closes off here, this closes here, this closes here, this closes here. This then comes up. This has to come over, and so we've got good markings here, and now some more structure coming around these clues in blue. We can't come into this edge at all, so we have to take one of these ends, but we'll always come off out this way. We can't come into this space at all, so this three is absolutely forced. That puts this into the grid. It actually now means these ends have to come like so. This coming in and out gives us our second time that this coloring in blue matters, so we don't want these ends to close again on themselves, and this too can't come to the right. It does come here, but this edge not being used so that we avoid uh, that collision is the next key step. That finishes the three clues. So this comes up. When this comes over, this now has to go out. These have to come out. Um, we've got a couple options, it looks like, at the top, but let's see if they all can work. Um, one way to kind of track into this is probably to do some more careful notation around these uh, big digits and see that we're going to have some limitations. Here, here's the key limitation. We have to take these two ends together or maybe these two ends together, but we always are going to have to take this edge. And if that's the case, we're going to have some constraints around this. These two don't work together, so we can only take this one on its own. And that means we'll take one of these edges, but not both. So there's uh, some stuff that's working out here. And this four having one, two, three ends together, those have to be used. So this has to work out this kind of way. And that marks off these ends. And so we now have, if we come back to coloring this in, made this blue group even larger, but it's still not to an edge of the grid. And if we took this path, it shuts off on itself again too soon. So like three times we've come back to this group in this puzzle to see that it's got a instead stay apart, and in marking it to stay apart, we got some of these edges put in. But we're gonna have a case where we take either this group on its own or these coming up, but there's uh, probably a potential issue with the count of this four. So notice if this came to the right, this coming up, this four now has to come this way, and we get four, four, but this is a three clue, it's not a four clue, so for parity, uh, arguments, reasons. I think this takes the bottom edge for sure. This comes over like so. These two loop ends now are still chasing around the grid. So notice that this set has to keep dodging. It's got to keep dodging through here and keep dodging through here and keep dodging even through here and keep dodging through here. So this is a long chase. So you've had a lot of work to get to this point of progress, but by the time you get here, you finally get some quick, uh, quick cornering to get some star into the center of the grid on this lower left side. We've got this four clue now with just one edge that we can still take. Marking that in and seeing this three clue is complete puts this in. Uh, this three has to come down, this has to come over. Uh, we have to take these two ends on the outside or uh, we aren't uh, gonna be able to get all four of these together. But in doing that, we see we can't take these two, so we have to take these together. This turns out, this two has just this one option for it. So um, we've come back to the space, we could have done this sooner. If these ends don't join, if like this dodges down, then notice that this edge is forced to quickly turn up and forms a closed hexagon, so that's no good. So these do quickly join, but then we see that these three ends can't be taken, so these instead are taken. Didn't mark this in, but these four clues are also uh, complete and known at this time. So this uh, loop path is fulfilled. When this is taken, that finishes this three, which means this top edge is what's needed for this three. These come over. If the twos on this edge dodge each other, then this three has to close on itself too fast, so these ends do come together. 
We're going to have an issue, though, if uh, we come to the top with this three set, because we would get to this point, we'd have finished the two clue, and we'd have finished the three clue, and there's nowhere else for that to go. So we can't take any of these top cells. We have to take the bottom path. That puts over this two. These keep dodging. This comes down. This comes down. Put in this pattern for the five. Nowhere else for this end to go. So it's have to go this way. Get this loop end to chase out. Get these ends to come down. They have to dodge. Have to dodge. Uh, if we took these two ends together, we'd then have to take these two ends. But that's going to be an issue. So we have to take these two. And the ending set finishes the puzzle. So hopefully you got uh, through a lot of the grid. If you were missing some of the break-in points, the start of this video highlighting the fives and twos over here was one of the intended breakthroughs. Less common, but one I came up with for this puzzle. And then this 5-5 five, five set was another starting point. And then the other key thing to track really as we were making headway through the center of the grid was a group that was growing out of this top middle, but had a set of chances, including through this five on its own, eventually through this 2-3 channel, and then through this 2-1 channel to close down too quickly. And so to get this all the way to an edge of the grid, to get the interior and the exterior to be separate for the slid length was a last key constraint that I used a lot in the construction of the puzzle. So it, it played out a lot in the solve. I think there's a very narrow solving path without doing this loop end chase to the top and getting this end coming over. I don't think there's any other way to really work through this lower left side. So. Hopefully you made it through the Saturday puzzle with a little bit of nudges through this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.